All right, thank you, Enrique. Um, as Enrique mentioned, the last round of events module updates have been launched, and this release moves the last of the events module features out of the Tentru Legacy Air app and into the new interface. So I'll show you how all of that works in today. Um, I will explain uh, further the new option Enrique mentioned, which was locking in pricing for events that use numbers based on the date of registration. And I'll go over uh, some scenarios of how and when you would use that. I'll walk you through the event registration features that have been moved over from the Tentaru Legacy Air app in this update into the numbers wizard. And that includes how to manually manage rates for spots, including when you would use this and when you would use other available features. Registration details such as campsite deposit overrides and admin notes fields the new event specific contact fields and assigning campsites. Then I'll speak briefly about the changes we've made to our pricing tiers and I'll update you on the status of the Tentaru Legacy Air app and show you how to replace it with the new version. So let's start by discussing that new method to lock in pricing. So um, a month or two ago, we launched a new option for locking in pricing for any event that uses numbers. The new feature allows councils to choose between calculating pricing based on the date paid in full, the traditional method, or the date of registration like a just names event. Now let's compare the two methods real quick. First of all, we have the date paid in full, which is your traditional method. In this method, you would base your rates on the date of payment. So when payment is received is how many spots get locked in at a given rate. When your next rate begins, you would recalculate pricing to update all finalized and in-cart registrations to the new rate. Any changes to the number of spots in the numbers wizard would also recalculate spots. Now that means that any modifications made would also recalculate pricing. So in the legacy intersystem legacy system on the registrations tab, you could manually override the rates to lock in a different pricing, but at any time that recalculation happened, that would get erased. And since a group could go in and change their own spots, recalculating their pricing and losing your modifications, uh, this was problematic. And councils that would do this would have to go back in every once in a while and make sure that all of their rate modifications were still there or they would redo them. In the new system, therefore, we've actually taken away the ability for a date paid in full registration to be able to do those manual overrides of the spots rates. Um, you can use event option overrides or the pricing tiers that I'll talk about more later to do that. The other method then is date of registration, where you can now choose this instead of date paid in full if you're doing more of those manual overrides because the rate the group gets is based on the date they register, so it never recalculates. When the next rate begins, only new spots get the higher rate. It won't automatically modify anything in the past that hasn't been paid for in full. If the group goes in and changes their spots, it doesn't affect those previously registered spots. And in the new system, we've built in some manual overrides to early base and late rate spots, so you can change how many of each they get, no matter what the rate is at the time, and rates won't recalculate. It's gonna be much easier to lock in those uh, specific rates that you want. And then if you have um, discounts, you can use those event option overrides or pricing tiers to make those happen without the system recalculating and, and losing those changes that you've made. Um, ideally, using having these two options available to you for locking and pricing will match however it is that you calculate your pricing and you can then keep control in the hands of your units instead of having to manually manage it all. And that'll free up your staff to be able to do other things rather than babysitting your summer camp registration because you have to make sure that the rates you want stick. 
And no matter what you do here, I would highly encourage you to reach out to me before you make any changes to see if one or the other of these would be better and how you might do your discounts if you were trying to use the date paid in full registration Whoops, with the, um, the manual overrides because you won't be able to do that anymore. Uh, so please schedule training with me at admin.tenaru.com forward slash training, and we will talk through your situation and see which one would be better for you. Um, for those discounts that I mentioned, we do have some best practices that we recommend to anyone who needs to set these up. Some examples would be uh, if you want to use a campership, your best practice is to use the individual event option overrides that are built under classes and then apply that to an individual participant. If you're doing something like on time recharter discount or a group has met their FOS goal and they get a few bucks off, uh, those can be done with a group event option override, also built under classes, but they apply to the group all of the spots instead of to individuals. And then if you have a returning unit getting last year's rate, um, or the FOS goal would be another one for this, you could do an additional pricing tier. We'll talk more about that after a while. The benefit of doing discounts through one of these processes instead of trying to override the rates directly is that for the event option overrides, you can title, give it a title and have it appear on the invoices specifically what discount that group is getting. These will also allow you to track your GL accounts and any transfers of funds from one to the other. You can also automatically grant the correct rate, whatever that happens to be, to new spots. This will help you clearly communicate to your group what rate they're getting, why they're getting a discount, uh, or an additional fee if that's the case. When you're using event option overrides, they're tied to the spots, but it's still sort of a separate thing, uh, or they're tied to the names. And these will automatically update with changes to the registration, like a campership will drop off if the scout that earned it decides not to come to camp, and then the next scout to take that spot doesn't automatically get the same discount if they haven't earned it. These sorts of discounts work for almost any event, regardless of how pricing is locked in. There are some nuances to that that I'm happy to work with you on on a training. Uh, these are our best practices for discounts, no matter what event you're working on. And then the new uh, event pricing modifications I'm about to show you are going to be really honed in to uh, changing how many spots you've got at your early base and late rates. And again, if you want to discuss how this is all going to work out for you, please schedule training with me and we'll work through it. Now to enable this setting on any existing um, numbers event type, simply load the event type. And I've already got summer camp brought up. So I'm going to go into the event type settings and I can scroll down to find the setting that I want or little uh, hint, you can find anything on the page. So in a PC, it's control F on a Mac, it's command F and that will bring up a search uh, and I'm going to look for lock in pricing. There it is. So this is under the pricing section if you're scrolling or you can search for it with the control F feature. And now you can see that lock-in pricing has two options for a numbers event, date of registration or date paid in full. The date paid in full is still the default. Anytime you create a new numbers event type, it's gonna be date paid in full. And then you can switch it to date of registration at any time and save to commit that change. You can also switch back to date paid in full. However, I will warn you that because these calculate pricing differently, if you're switching back and forth, trying to decide which one you want, any modifications that you have made will be overwritten by the pricing method that you are switching back and forth from. So do this with caution, make sure you know what you want, what you want before switching your pricing type. Yeah, Annika, I actually urge everybody before anybody makes any changes to these two, please schedule a training so that we can take a look at it and make sure that uh, nothing gets, um, that you're using the best recommended practices. Yeah, this is a big change to the system. So if you are interested in using this, come talk to us. 
and we'll help you decide if this is the right thing for you, if there's a combination of different features we can use to meet your needs. Now, I will mention that on a Just Names event, you'll only have date of registration as an option. Date paid info isn't available for a Just Names event. Okay, now let's go and check out the numbers wizard. Now, first I'm going to actually go and register a group for my event. And I'm gonna do this here in this webinar so you can see uh, the difference, the comparison between the user interface and the admin interface. Um, because this view right here for the user with a tally or a, um, a space to enter in the numbers, you don't have any control over pricing here. This is what a date paid in full registration modification will still look like for an admin. So you won't be able to modify prices because the prices are calculated by the system, either for a date paid in full or when you're using the system as an end user. The next section is registration notes. And I am really gonna get into this more in the admin side because there are more options, but you can see here that the user can enter in their primary event contact. And again, we'll talk about that later. I just wanna show that it's here now. Uh, campsite assignment, pick your top three choices and let's check out. And that way our registration is ready to go for later parts of the step. Okay, and now I'm gonna jump back over to the admin interface and I'm gonna go find that group as an admin. And that's gonna be from the select client modal and I'm going to the registrations tab and I'm gonna select my event type and they were registered for week seven. And I can either scroll to find the group, here they are, or this is also searchable. So you can select that specific group. And I wanna reiterate this, this spot has a, a summary of how many spots are in the registration, the amount for the total registration and any balance due. Clicking on this will jump me right into that group so I can move on with things. Now I'm gonna click manage to load the numbers wizard and it's gonna bring me to the spots step first. Now this looks very similar, except now I can add additional lines. The line that defaults here is what the group entered. Since I just did that, it's showing me that I have 10 spots at the $355 rate. If the rate had gone up since the group registered, I would have another line here with zero spots at the next rate. I'm not sure what the next rate is for this registration, but for purposes of this, let's say that the next rate is 375. So that would give me one more line at 375. And I could just quickly say, this group's bringing five more people at the next rate. And then, uh, so these lines are really ideal for saying how many are in at each spot. So let's say if uh, my late rate is 400, uh, I could put in enough spots at each rate to manage this and I can override it, say, well, everybody's gonna be in at the early rate instead. So I'll move everybody up here and delete the other two rows. These are the kinds of rate management options that we want you to use in this section. You notice that this is an amount that you can write anything into. We're not gonna restrict you to the early base and late rates that you have programmed into your event. However, we want you to use these lines, these options for actual uh, changes to the rate itself, not for a discount. Using a discount, we really want you to use the event option overrides or the pricing tiers instead of manually overriding rates here. And that has to do with uh, communication with your groups and accounting. Uh, the next card here is for adults. And uh, you'll notice here that we have one blank spot here at 145 and then a line here with two adults at $0. And there's a lovely little button here and one up here as well for apply leader ratios. When you have a numbers event that calculates based on date of registration, your free leaders, if you have those programmed in, will still automatically calculate when the group registers. When an admin is in modifying numbers, then those leader ratios won't automatically recalculate. 
After you're done adjusting your spots, you'll want to click the Apply Leader Ratios button, and it's going to calculate how many adults go in it free. So I'm going to say I'm going to bring another two adults here, and I'm going to apply the leader ratios. For 19 spots, uh, youth spots, I am entitled to three free adults, and it's going to move, uh, leave one at the current rate for, uh, for the adults. If I bump this up to 20, let's see if we get another free adult. We do. So now any additional spots that I put in would go in at 145, um, and those four adults are in it at zero dollars. The other time that you might use the apply leader ratios button is if you don't already have a free leaders entered into the system, which is something that we do for you. So if you want, if you don't have free leader ratios entered and you click the button, you'll get a message at the top that says you don't have free leader ratios set up. You can do that by going to uh, emailing us at support at tentabrew.com and letting us know what your ratios are and what event type they go to. And I'm showing you right now a page on our admin manual that has all of that information for you, as well as the format of the data that we need to put those in the system. You can email all of that to support at and we'll get that set up for you. Please allow three business days to get that in the system. And this page is under the events menu, free leader ratios. And then Michelle is also gonna drop you a link if she hasn't already, so you can come out here directly to get that set up. And we can automate free adults. We can't automate partial adults. So if you're doing some sort of a partial discount, uh, we can work with you to set up your event option overrides to get that set up. Uh, to commit the changes to the spots that I just made, um, I would click next until I get through the numbers wizard and then check out. Before I do that today, though, I am going to move on to the next section, which is the registration details section. And the rest of these items are really what brought everything over from the old interface into the new. And so here we can modify the date the registration is added. Uh, it's going to default to today because my group just signed up. But if you had a group that signed up offline, like at summer camp, they just said, we're, we're coming, we're bringing this many people, here's my deposit. You could come in and enter them and then backdate it to when they were at summer camp. You can also override the campsite deposit. So maybe they get pay a double deposit for having two campsites because they're a big group. This is where you override that. The registration notes is the same field the users get to see that you enable at the event type. And the notes for group is an admin field where you enter notes to the group. They can see these. And then the admin notes is notes you enter in for yourselves. And this the users can't see. After that, we have the event contacts. And this is brand new. This was not in the old interface. We're really excited to be able to bring this to you. These are event specific contacts. So they are separate from the group primary and alternate contact. You can copy the primary contact over if you need to. Oh, I, let me add something. Um, I wanna, this is for later. Okay, and then um, you can also require this or hide it at the admin side. And I will show you where to do all of that. Um, so first of all, I wanna say that the notifications will go out to all four contacts. If you have a group primary, a group alternate, a, an event primary and an event alternate, all four will get receipts and notifications from the system, your automated messages for the event type, your manually sent messages for the event. Uh, all four contacts will receive it. So it, you can have everybody be a different contact. They all get the notification and your primary group contact no longer has to forward these notifications to the adult in charge of each event. And then both of these contacts, uh, sets of contacts will also appear well, the, the event specific contacts will also soon appear in the uh, event reports. And we are working on that and we'll let you know when that is launched. Now I'm gonna go over 
to the event type settings and show you how to turn these on and off. Now, before I do that even, we are um, uh, event contact, here it is. Um, we have already turned this on for every single numbers event in the system in all of our councils. So it's already there out there as optional for your users to fill out. If you have an event that you know doesn't need to use this, you can, like a family event, you can turn that off. And if you have an event where you know for sure you're going to want to use this, you may want to flip, come in here and flip it to required. So every group gives you an event specific contact. Once you've made your changes to how this works, you can click save and your changes will be committed in the system. And then that will apply to all of your groups coming in to manage their registrations or start a new one. I think that does it for the event contacts. The next thing we're gonna look at is assigning campsites. And I had a request at the start of this that I will just show you real quick at the event type settings, how to turn on and off contacts for an event type. And that's in this same section. Um, right underneath the event contact, you have show campsite ranking and require campsite ranking. So if you need to turn this on or off for your event type, that's where you'll do it. And then that will apply to all of your events built under this event type. I just want to make one quick comment. I think Annika maybe mentioned that we would let everyone know once we've added the event contact to reports. I did. I just want to clarify that um, that we have added it to all of the exports already. The only reports that it's not on are like the PDF reports or within the content of emails. So we're already including all the new contacts and on uh, as recipients on emails and also on exports, um, but not yet on some of the um, report content. All right. Thanks for the clarification, Moisha. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my group now and go back into the numbers wizard and click through to the campsites step. And I'm going to do the same thing in the group account so we can look at those side by side. And the campsites assignment has gotten an amazing overhaul in the rewrite. This is really fantastic. In the old in the legacy interface, the old way that it would work, uh, the campsite choices would be assigned here either by the user or the admin and then you'd have to go to a completely different section of the system and in the last few months it's even been in a different app altogether in the air app to assign campsites now we have brought all of that into the same step of the numbers wizard so an admin can quickly assign a campsite at the same time as they are adjusting a registration or adding a new one in the old system, when you were assigning campsites, you couldn't see the group's preferences. You'd have to download a report and look at what they had there in order to know if you were assigning them something they really wanted. Now, your top three campsite preferences are displayed in the top left corner, including how many spots are available in those campsites based on finalized registrations. In the old system, Assigning multiple campsites took several different steps. It wasn't the most intuitive process. Now, splitting a group between campsites is easy and clear. Click New to get a new line for campsites. Pick the campsites you want to use, and then split your group between the two. And it, again, in the legacy interface, the, the campsite assignment step was completely separate from where the group would enter their preferences. And now we've brought it all together so you can manage everything for the group's registration from within the numbers wizard. And you'll also see here that the total number of participants is on display. You've got 10 youth spots and two adult spots available. You can split those evenly here and it will tell you here in a summary how many have been assigned to the campsite. Um, and this is very handy if you're having to split a large group over multiple campsites. This will also prevent you from going over. You'll see here that Clearwater has zero spots available, but it's still letting me select it. Individual campsite capacity isn't enforced when you're assigning groups. However, you cannot assign more spots than you have available in the group. You'll get a warning here that it's you've got too many people in. And if you click next, 
you'll get an error message. You won't be able to continue. So there's no way that you can over assign group members from a group. If you have, oh, I forgot to bring them down. If you have fewer spots assigned than registered, you can continue. So you can assign a partial group. And when you go back in, it will give you that extra line where you can assign these somewhere. And if you assign them to the same campsite and click next, it says here that the campsites assigned is Clearwater and going back a step, they'll all be moved and combined into one line. So this will be very clear when you're looking at your data later, uh, which campsites are in use. After you've assigned all of your campsites, you can uh, complete the wizard and check out to finalize all of your changes. And then once your changes are committed, let me get down here and place the order. Then we'll do our shortcut to get back to the event. Your campsite assignment stats are displayed here on the event dashboard underneath the reports. You have all of your campsites listed, including how many spots are assigned to each campsite. Clearwater is clearly a little overbooked. Might need to do something about that if this were a real event. The export here will have your campsite data, including which groups are assigned to each campsite. And then the normal reports like the groups export will have uh, campsite data as well. Um, we haven't changed which reports display campsite data. The campsite step is the last major change that we've made to the numbers wizard. Now I wanna back up a little and we're gonna go and talk about our new pricing tiers option. Um, we have now added the ability to add more than the three default pricing tiers to your system. Every uh, group, every council account has the default in council pricing, out of council and provisional, which you can turn on and off for any event except for the default. In the old system, we were constrained to those three because of the flash interface, but now that limitation is gone. So by request, we can add additional pricing tiers to your event module setup so you can manage different rate groups without so many event option overrides. Uh, and then you can turn on or off any of these pricing tiers for any of your events. So if you only ever use a separate pricing tier for a summer camp, you can still go in and only that event will get that specialty pricing. Some cases when you might want to use this include your FOS discount group. They've met their goal, they get 5% off. You can turn this on for eligible events, set your pricing, assign the applicable uh, groups to this and then they get the discount automatically when they register. You can also do this for a returning year discount for summer camp units so they get last year's pricing if they pay by a certain date. And you can assign this to those eligible groups. And having this ability to add additional pricing tiers matches how pricing tiers work in the facilities module if you're using that. So you can offer different rates for different groups um, pretty quickly, pretty easily. We set these up for you. Uh, you can contact us by support at tentaroo.com or when you're in the event type settings, you've got a little button right here you can click. And that'll bring up a form that you can fill out and say what your pricing tier is that you need added. And we will get that set up. Please allow up to three business days for us to uh, build that in for you. And when you do have a new pricing tier added, the default pricing uh, rates added to this will be the same as the default in council rate. Then you go into each event, make your modifications to what the pricing gets, um, recalculate for a paid in full type of event, and it will automatically go in there. Um, and let's go back and I'll show you how to update the pricing tier for a group. So I'm gonna go into the group's settings and under their profile, you have an option for events pricing and you can change that to any of these that you need, save your changes. And then if it's a, a numbers-based event that 
uses date paid in full, you'll hit recalculate. And, and that will do, Moisha, that doesn't update automatically, does it, when you switch the pricing? Uh, no. Okay, yeah, you'll have to go in and manually modify it for any currently registered events um, or recalculate in the date paid in full version of things. Okay, so that is the biggest change in the system itself. Next, I'm gonna address the Air app. Um, as I've said a couple of times, this update removes the last of the event features from the legacy interface. And because of that, we have launched a new version of the Tenaru Legacy Air app in which the events tab is disabled. You'll, need, you'll want to probably delete your old Tenaru Legacy Air app and download the new version if you need to continue using the features still there, uh, which are the locations master list where you manage which campsites are available for events, the groups, payments, and calendar reports, admin users, the GL accounts master list, though these can be managed from within the events and facilities modules, and then your general system options. So it's pretty much your system admins and your accountants that will still need this. Um, probably most of your other users won't need to use the Air app at all anymore. And then we are working over the next couple of months to move out all the rest of these items. So um, we won't need the Air app at all for very much longer. So with that, I am going to turn the floor over to Enrique. And he is going to demonstrate on a PC how to remove the old app and install the new one. And then if you need help with a Mac, you can schedule training with me and I'll help you with that. All right, thank you, Annika. All right, so you've installed two applications. I'm gonna actually go ahead first and log in to the Great Sky Country and it brings me to the normal uh, create account interface. And I'm gonna click on settings. These two links are have been updated, or the Tensor Air app link has been updated. The other one doesn't really. You do not need to do anything with Get Adobe Air if you are already utilizing the uh, Tensor Air app. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download the Air app, and in a minute we'll run it. But first, we're going to want to delete the uh, previous version that we have. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my start button and I'm gonna type in program and it is gonna give me the add remove programs settings, system settings. And once I have that, I am going to come into the search, the search this list and I'm gonna type in uh, Tentaru, where's it going? Tentaru. And then a sec second, it'll filter everything out and it will give us the apps that are on there. You're going to want to remove the Tentru Legacy version 9.0, um, and you will not have two of them. Just We have two of them because we test in our development server, so we have to have one that works for the development server and we one that works for the live server. But we're going to select the app, and we're going to click on the uninstall, and it'll take a, it'll ask, it will ask you for permissions, and then it'll start the... Um, uh, the removal process, the uninstalling process. This process should normally take 10 to 15 seconds to do, at least that's what it does on my computer. Um, although, however, since we're live on a webinar and I'm trying to delete a program, it might actually take a little bit longer. Um, so while that is going, um, Oh, there it goes. It goes really quick. So I don't have I don't have to use filler uh, <laughs> filler filler talk time. So as soon as it gets deleted, we're gonna go and uh, reinstall it. It's no different than it was before. However, if you do run into any issues, please reach out to us at supportattentru.com or give us a call so that we can go ahead and troubleshoot and see what the issue uh, is. Um, when you install it, please make sure you don't install it on your telephone or on your tablets. Um, these will require either a Mac or it will require a Windows PC to be able to run. So, all right, so there it went ahead and then uninstalled it. So I can go ahead and close out that program. Now I am going to click on the opening of the new Air app and it's gonna ask me, do I wanna install it? And the answer to that is yes. I am gonna go ahead and tell it to add a shortcut to my desktop and continue. And it's going to also launch the application. 
it will ask you for permissions that you want to install this. And once again, the answer to that is yes. And as soon as it finishes installing, once again, this probably only takes 10, 15 seconds to install. Uh, it will launch the system and it's getting ready to launch. And now you can just go ahead and find your council that you want to work with. And let me grab my demo user. You're in the there. Great Sky Country, Tenteru. Demo, oh, thank you for that one. And we're in the system. So that's really all that it is. If you run into any issues, reach out to us. If you need instructions for uh, installing at a Mac, since we're not demoing that here, uh, please reach out to Annika. She's a Mac user and she will be able to help you out with that. So Annika, I will go ahead and I'll give the screen back to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much Enrique for demonstrating that. Um, so today we went through the new feature for locking in pricing based on date of registration for numbers events. We looked at how to manage those rates in the numbers wizard when you're using date of registration. And we looked at the registration details section with the newly moved over stuff, the campsite deposit, the notes fields, and your brand new event contacts fields and how to turn those on and off. We looked at how to assign campsites in the new interface, and we discussed the new option for adding additional pricing tiers for your events module. And then we showed you how to update your Air app and what's all gonna be still in that. After our webinars today, we're gonna email a recording of this training for everyone to access. In addition to this recording, if you have staff that would like additional training on any of the new features or on any of our other modules, you can schedule that at admin.tenteru.com forward slash training. You can also email us at support at tenteru.com, use our admin manual at admin.tenteru.com, our user manual at users.tenteru.com, or give us a call at 888-651-0153. Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 Eastern Time.